So I'm making this video because uh, I had this problem with this F7 board. I think it's a problem with F4 boards as well. And all the research I did, uh, I, I had a lot of difficulty finding uh, a fix. And so I'm just sharing what worked for me. Um, so I upgraded fr uh, from this Betaflight F3 to a Maytech F722 uh, with the um, uh, FC Hub uh, VTX as well. Um, the package comes with uh, four of these rubber standoffs and it also comes with a low ESR capacitor which you should see is installed right there. Um, I, I just used nylon standoffs and I did not put that capacitor in uh, because on my F3 I didn't have it and my F3 it worked fine. Um, and so I spent probably a f almost a full 24 hours researching, researching. Uh, so what would happen is when um, I connected it into Betaflight on my computer and I spun up the motors manually, they, uh, they would spin up smooth, everything would be fine, right? They would go the full throttle, uh, I could bring them down and there was no jitter, there was no twitching, no glitchy, nothing, right? However, uh, when I connected it to uh, my radio and I would arm it because this is D uh, shot D shot 600 and I have the minimum throttle set to 4.5 percent um, it would it, by default right when you arm it they, they the motors spin up to 4.5 percent and they were all <laughs> they were all twitchy and crazy and uh, it, it just wanted to go off and do its own thing and so uh, pulling my hair out over that what I found was <laughs> um, I was gonna solve this with uh, with both uh, physical isolation and electrical isolation. So I installed these rubber standoffs. I was skeptical that these would work. Let me see if that gets in focus there. These little rubber standoffs. If you watch, right, they see how it flexes there. I'm pinching it. So they're they're. It's not a stud that goes all the way through them. Uh, it's rubber in the middle, right? So um, it's actually two components held together by rubber. Um, so anyway, so I installed these studs, and then um, it only came with one cap. Uh, I think it's a 470 microfarad, and I think it's 35 volt. Um, I, it doesn't. I don't have any indication on if it is lowest ESR, but I imagine it is. It's made text. So they'll usually give you the, the good stuff. So, anywho, so I installed that, and then again plugged into the computer, spun up the motors, um, spun fine, and then I connected to my transmitter, and everything was working beautifully. So, um, it looks like the gyroscope on these uh, Maytech flight controllers, uh, specifically the F722. Um, they are very sensitive uh, to both physical isolation, I'm sorry, physical noise and electrical noise. So give that a shot. It was a night and day difference for me. All I did was I installed these little rubber things and the capacitor and it sh they should have come with four of these and um, it should have come with one low ESR capacitor. Uh, if, if it didn't come with those, get yourself a 450 microfarad 35 volt low ESR capacitor you should be good um, the longest lead on the capacitor goes onto your positive line uh, the shortest lead on the capacitor goes on your negative also capacitors uh, in most cases you can see there it has that uh, that line there on the side that also uh, indicates uh, which side is negative so yeah just solder that on um, I mean I guess you could go you can go the extra mile and you can buy like four of them and then you can put one capacitor on each of your ESCs um, and uh, I, I, I'm no electrician, but I, I suspect that that's probably more effective. Um, however, I found that uh, to resolve the, the twitching, I didn't have to touch my D's, I didn't have to touch the P's, none of that, right? To solve twitching, glitching on this F7, and as and I'm watching other YouTube videos, it looks like it's on the F4s as well. Um, it needs physical and electrical isolation. And so if you're upgrading from an F3 and you didn't have that isolation before and you're skeptical if the isolation even works, I can tell you it's a night and day difference. Thanks.